Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today we're going to be taking a look at using the custom vertex tool to create this evolving organic shape. So that's pretty interesting, but it's surprisingly easy to do. So let's get started on it. So the first thing I want to do is to add a 3D shape. I'm going to set this shape to icosphere. I'm going to set those subdivisions to 50. So there's our icosphere over there. Let's to that add a UV map tool. Now, what I want to do with this is I don't want planar. And I also don't want spherical. I actually want it mapped like a cube. So I'm going to select cube map. Y is fine. Then I'm going to add a custom vertex tool. After that, we're going to add a replace normals to tidy everything up. And after that, let's add a 3D merge and a 3D camera and a 3D renderer. And also to that merge, let's add a three point light. Let's set our camera's position to be something like seven on Z. Let's come to the renderer, look at that. Turn on lighting, turn on hardware renderer. There is our icosphere. Let's just move this light over to negative four on X and maybe negative one on Y. And let's just give it some color. Let's go for something like that. Let's copy it, add it to the merge. Let's change its position. So positive four on X and positive one on Y. And let's just change its color. Now I'm doing this because this lighting is actually what's going to drive the, the whole effect. Now let's talk about the fancy custom vertex displacement. And just a note on this hardware renderer, I'm actually going to stick with the default bit depth and the Z buffer fast because to my mind, they're actually going to give us a better looking result. So let's talk about how we're going to set up our effect. What we're going to do is we're going to add a background node. We're going to set its size to something like 1024 by 1024. Let's come over to the color. We want to select gradient. Let's look at it over here. We want the gradient type to be radial. And then we want to set up these colors. So this one here, the one that's black, I'm going to make red. The one that's white, I'm going to make blue. And then I'm going to click in the middle to add another one. And I'm going to make that green, but probably just set these other two values to 0.5. So we've got something like that as the gradient spread. Then what I want to do is I want to add this to the custom vertex. So I'm going to drag it in there into the image one input slot. So we need to be able to select these colors inside our custom vertex tool. So we're going to do that from the intermediate tab and we're going to type the following expression. So get R1 W open brackets TU comma TV close brackets. And if you've watched my previous custom vertex tutorials, you'll know exactly what we're doing here. We're grabbing the red channel. We're telling the edge pixels to wrap and then we're mapping it to the UV coordinates of the object. So. Let's copy this expression, which is for the red channel, and paste it into intermediate two, and change that R1 to G1 to get the green channel. Copy and paste into the third slot, and change the green to blue, so B1. So now we've picked out the colors of the gradient, and we can use them to drive the displacement. And then we're going to do that in the position fields here, and it's a very simple operation. We're going to multiply PX by I1, which is the red. Already you can see the displacement we're getting. We're going to multiply the Y by I2, which is the green. And you've guessed it, the Z by I3, which is the blue. I'm just also going to add a multiplier to the overall effect. So the X value, I'm going to multiply by two. The Y value, I'm going to multiply by 1.5 and the Z value, I'm going to multiply by two again. So now you can see how this is actually starting to work. Just going to drop in after this replace normals a 3D transform so that I can show you this is actually a, a proper sort of 3D displacement and we're displacing differently on each axis. 
just reset that for the time being. And let's talk about how we're going to animate this. So I'm going to come back to the background tool. And I'm going to do it by adding a modifier to the start and end positions of the gradient. First of all, I just want to set that X position to be 0.5 and 0.5. So it's starting in the center of the screen like that. And you can see we're getting this more flower-like effect as a result over on the right hand side. So let's take the start, right click, modify with perturb, come over to the modifier. We're going to set the scale to be 0.5 and 0.5 on X and Y. And we're going to set the speed to be 0.4. Then let's come back to the gradient and let's do the same thing with the end. So right click, modify with perturb, come over to the modifiers tab. Again, we're going to set the X and Y to 0.5. We're just going to have a different speed. Let's go with 0.35 for that. And let's just change the random seed. So I'm going to go for 3000 for this because I happen to know it's going to actually create the result that I want. You can obviously experiment with all sorts of different random seeds here and it's going to give you a completely different look. But now you can see we've got this evolving shape like this. Just going to pull that camera out a little bit more, 10 I think, so we get the full effect. Let's also now merge this over a background, merge the renderer over the top of it like this. Now what I want to do is I want to add to the renderer a brightness contrast because the process that we're going to be doing is actually going to affect the alpha channel. So I want to turn on the alpha channel here and I want to clip black and clip white. And that just makes sure that we don't get values that are going to mess with the alpha. Let's take the brightness contrast and merge it over the background. And let's set the size to 2. And let's also just set the blend amount to something like 0.2. So it's like faint in the background there. Let's add in a blur and drop it into here. And let's crank the blur up to, I don't know, something like 30 maybe. And you can see we've got this nice texture in the background there. It's making it look all a little bit more interesting. Let's just hide the other viewer for now. I think what I also want to do at this point is to add another merge at the end here and take this brightness contrast into it like this. Let's look at that. And I want to flip the horizontal and vertical like so, so I get a more mirrored effect. And again, let's just reduce the blend amount, I think, down to something like this. So now we've got even more symmetry in the effect. So it's looking a bit rubbish at the moment, and that's because I think we need to do a little bit of adjustment on this colour. Let's get that blue to be richer, and maybe even this to be richer as well. And let's come back to our original icosphere. So what I want to do with this, this shape is I want to affect its opacity using a fast noise. So bring in a fast noise, and then let's just pipe it directly into the shape like that. Just going to increase the scale of this to four, so we get more variation in that. Then let's also copy that fast noise, paste it, and merge it over the top of the other one. And for this new one, let's set the scale to something like 300. So we're getting, if you look closely, we're getting this kind of speckled, grainy look. And that, I think, just is going to help the effect. Let's maybe just add in a glow, drop it into here, I think, and then just make sure that glow is going into both of those versions there. Let's come back to the point lights and maybe set their decay type to linear and then just drop that decay rate. So we're getting a little bit more control over the lighting like that. Do the same thing with this other one, switch it to linear and just affect its decay rate like that. So it's all looking a little bit fancier, I think, like so. We can also maybe just take that brightness contrast and merge it in here. Let's make a little bit of space, add another merge in at this point here, take the brightness contrast, and let's increase the size to something like 1.5, and just knock the blend way back here like that. So we're kind of getting a ghosted version. Maybe again, just kind of flip those two. Actually, maybe just don't flip the, the vertical this time. And that actually looks quite nice, I think. What we could also do is come back to that 3D transform and animate that Y rotation. And I think that could be interesting as well. Let's do it with a an expression and let's use time and maybe divide time by four. 
and that's just going to kind of rotate it around like so. Another thing we could do is come back to that icosphere and maybe swap it out for a straight sphere and that gives a surprisingly different result. We could maybe up the subdivisions of those and if we come into the background you'll notice that if we adjust the position of these colours we can get some interesting effects as well. So really there's loads you can do to create your own variants of this, but hopefully I've given you enough to get you started. So thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again soon.